É, boa tarde, eu gostaria de agradecer a participação de todos nesse encontro. Este é mais um evento dos Seminários em Biologia, que é que está sendo patrocinado e organizado por todos os programas de pós-graduação do, do IB, DFS e DFM. E hoje nós temos um convidado que veio de bem longe. E hoje nós vamos falar, é, escutar a palestra do professor Pratius Chukla, que é, é um importante colaborador de um, de um orientador do nosso programa, dos nossos programas, né, que é o professor Márcio Poças. E aí, então, a gente vai, é, a seguir, após a apresentação dele, a gente vai abrir para perguntas. Então, todo mundo que tiver interessado, quiser perguntas, coloca aqui no chat, que a gente vai passar para ele ao final dessa apresentação. Agora eu vou passar a palavra para o professor Márcio, que vai, é, que vai introduzi-lo e dar início a essa, essa palestra. Ok. Boa tarde a todos. Good evening to people in India. It's with a great pleasure that I welcome Professor Shukla to deliver a talk in our webinar. Professor Shukla, he is a PhD in, from the medicine faculty of the APS University Riva. He was a postdoc, he had a postdoc uh, fellowship in the University of Technology, Durban, South Africa. Uh, he's also a professor, he was visiting professor at the University of Cincinnati, USA. Professor Shukla is the head of the Department of Microbiology of the Maharshi Dayanand University, one of the most respected uh, uh, institutions in India. Professor Shukla, he's very dynamic and very prolific. He has already written uh, six books, 20 book chapters, he has one patent, he has published more than 135 peer-reviewed uh, publications in international journals, and uh, he's, the, uh, he's a member, he's fellow from the National Academy of Agriculture Science, fellow of Academy of Microbiology, Microbiology sorry, Microbiological Sciences, Biotech Research Society of India. For many years, he was the General Secretary of the Association of Microbiologists of India, which reunites thousands of members. And uh, today, Professor Shukla will talk about his work on uh, biotech enzymes and modeling. Uh, I could go on and on. He's the editor from, from Frontiers in Plant Science, PLOS One, Applied Microbiology and Biotechnology. And he has more than 2,500 citations for, from his work. So I welcome you, Professor Shukla and you can share your screen and start your lecture. We will be in the background. After you finish, we will transmit you the questions from the audience. Bahot Danielad, welcome. Bem-vindo in Portuguese. Okay, thank you, Marcio. Thank you, Anamelia. Thank you, uh, Jivago, Prolo, and all other colleagues uh, who have joined uh, this webinar. And I'm very much pleased uh, with uh, the invitation uh, from UNB and Marcio. Marcio uh, is a very well known to us. And uh, now, I, without wasting much time, I will just uh, uh, start my presentation. And uh, if you see uh, the microbial enzymes uh, are very very important and uh, these microbial enzymes are uh, just just hold on
Yeah, okay, okay, I'm starting. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, I just wanted to tell you that computational approaches in microbial enzyme is uh, today's uh, webinar topic. And if you see, I have written this ideas for future. So, it means that there are so many new aspects which are coming in uh, microbial biotechnology. And this idea is uh, not a new idea, but it is always uh, all futuristic ideas because most of the people who are uh, working on enzymes or they are working on protein or other aspects of uh, microbiology, they are also trying to explore these areas. So coming to this uh, is uh, that introduction, if you see, the microorganisms are very, very important and so many microorganisms are present in the, the nature and uh, they are producing so many important molecules. But if you see, the regulatory mechanism is not uh, much clear and uh, uh, we have to see that how industrial microbiologists can screen a lot of strain like we did uh, in the last semester with Marcy also. We screen a lot of isolates for uh, uh, the microbes and then we uh, found uh, that, okay, they, these are the important and these are not important. So how to know those aspects? Then uh, secondly, if a desired strain is also known, uh, we need to see that how the developmental program and how what type of culture conditions are required. So this is a very important task. These three steps are very important. So further, if you see, if you are able to work on these aspects, you can work on sustainable microbial biotechnology. We say it is a sustainable microbial biotechnology. So you can use these enzymes for bioremediation. You can use for environmental biotechnology application. You can also use for various type of novel platform design. You can also use systems biology tools and protein engineering tools for various other purposes. Now, if you see what is microbial systems biology, what we need to do. So if you see uh, the microbial systems biology gives you a, a very important aspect of working on various type of microbial systems. So you, you, you have to learn these things properly. So these are the three aspects by which you can see. So one is that engineering the microbial metabolism, whatever microorganisms are available, you need to engineer them and try to understand that how these metabolism can be engineered. Second is trying to see the genome sequencing and functional genomics tools and also various type of metabolic models you can generate for uh, bioremediation. Bioremediation these days is a very important aspect. Many people, they are working on bioremediation, but with microbial bioremediation, you have a lot of other aspects which you can uh, see and you can visualize. Further, if you go, uh, you can definitely see, just hold on, I think slide is not Okay, now if you see, are you able to see slides now? Excuse me? Yes, we are. We okay, are. okay. Yes. So, uh, so if you see the industrial systems biology, uh, and uh, if it is, uh, you can see the complete uh, uh, this slide that it gives you a very important aspect of how these industrial systems biology can be aspect can be explored. So you you cannot do everything being a microbiologist or being a biochemist or being a person in life sciences, any branch of life sciences, 
you cannot know everything so you have to collaborate for different aspects like you see uh, for genome sequencing studies or for high throughput sequencing technologies or for getting all type of kinetic models or something which you want to learn from metabolic engineering you have to collaborate and these are the dynamic interaction between different uh, disciplines which was uh, uh, adapted from Otto and Nielsen and which is very very important for us so if you see this is a simple mutation we can do and we get a 20 fold increase of the enzyme with a simple mutation so if you use these type of tools so these are different tools you can use in your studies for understanding the metabolic interaction the people who are working with host state specific metabolic construction or host state associated abundance you have to use this particular scaffold for working together now for getting the uh, various type of softwares you must uh, you must be uh, thinking about that what type of software we have to use so these are the sophisticated uh, techniques and softwares you can use for functional category you can use megan megatrap mg rest for taxonomic you can use quim mother mlst for clustering you can use galaxy igam and uh, megan for pathway analysis you can use camera meta look or unifrac so these are the different software uh, some of them are trial version is freely available uh, for the experiments so in the times of covid when you have uh, labs are closed definitely the bioinformatics gives a very important aspect you can work uh, together and also after validating uh, validating the uh, data which you are getting from the lab these softwares are very very important this we published uh, in briefings in functional genomics as systems biology as an approach for deciphering the microbial interactions now what is molecular dynamic simulation many people they have started already working on that and you can see that you have to do uh, this type of modeling so uh, by getting these type of uh, modeling softwares and tools you can improve the enzymes so you can see also that whether the protein folding is seen or not also you can see the flexibility and also the free energy changes including you can have the uh, analysis for the uh, crystallographic data which you are presently having so if uh, i will just present some of the case studies which we did in our lab in bioinformatics as well as enzyme modeling this is one study of hmgcr this enzyme is very very important and it was uh, this was the pathway which was uh, showing the in involvement of paroxysmal uh, smgcr so this enzyme we modeled and we tried to see with various type of isoforms for homo sapiens and we model the structure so we get the if you see this slide 30 uh, structures uh, 3d structures of hmgcr isoform 2 from homo sapiens were seen and then we tried to see the detailed structure composition where Uh, different color components can see different type of aspects like in this figure so you can also find this that what type of isoforms are very important for uh, enzyme interaction which is present in this uh, enzyme so then we did the vali validation uh, through hmgcr isoform 2 which was found in homo sapiens with procheck and proof and also we have seen that what type of important interaction it is having for the statin therapy actually this is something which is very important and uh, clue clue giving clue for statin therapy throughout the world so you can see that for the various uh, heart elements we are using various type of statins so which statin is better you can see with this particular study which we have done through binding site interaction studies this we published in computers in biology and medicine uh, and it was explication of interaction between hmgcr isoform 2 and various statins this paper is with me if you any of you want it i can forward it to you now uh, second uh, table of i uh, uh, this hmgcr isoform 2 is that what type of statins you have to target what type of the uh, amino acid in that particular protein you have to target so that is also very important and this study needs further validation through the wet lab data from using various type of other uh, wet lab experiments now the next study is alanases is very core to my uh, very close to my heart and we have learned lot of things in, on alanases i started working on alanases uh, way back in uh, uh, 2011 but uh, later on we consolidated on alanases and biobleaching and uh, presently we are working for its uh, eco friendly applications now if you see we were with thymoma mycelis lanuginosus uh, this is our indigenous strain 
and we got uh, family 11 xylenases. So we find that uh, the modeling uh, protocol have seen that tyrosine 77 is a very important residue in the active site, which can be modeled as per need of that particular application. If you want to use this xylenase for, bio, uh, for biofuel applications, you have to see whether it interacts properly or not. It gives you a uh, proper amount of uh, uh, sugar or not. If you want to use it for pulp and paper industry, you also have to see that whether this enzyme, this particular enzyme is available or it can have very good important of these lignifications or brightness of the pulp and paper. So we did this uh, modeling study and you can see xylobios and xyloparanose. We have seen green dotted lines represent this uh, bonding interaction. And this is a table which gives you excellent uh, data about xylobios and uh, xylotriose. You can find that this Y77S F in the active site is giving very good important uh, aspect for modeling. So we try to model these aspects Y77F and Y77R. These are the mutants which we have created in silico. And these mutants are telling you the correct uh, uh, aspect where you can work on for further modeling. So uh, then we uh, try to see this uh, complete uh, profile of that. And this is uh, the function prophecy that how these xylenases can be active for other functions in that particular uh, microbe or you can use it for other applications. So this will be published at Springer Weave brief in that uh, computational strategies for uh, improve uh, protein function prophecy of xylenases from thermomyces lanuginosus. This book is available online. You can always uh, go and read this particular thing. It gives you all aspects of computational approaches in xylenases if any one of you are working. Uh, from thermomyces lanogenosis. Next aspect is metabolic injury for therapeutic proteins. This is also a case study. As I told you, new avenues I'm uh, talking about. So I have to tell you some new aspects and some other aspects which people have worked, but they have not worked up to the uh, product scale. Here, if you see uh, this particular study of metabolic injury of therapeutic proteins, we started working on uh, uh, continuously cultured uh, animal cells in collaboration with Ipka Industries in Mumbai. So uh, when we got this project, pro, uh, project we got an uh, uh, important thing that recombinant biotropic proteins uh, like hormones, growth packs, they are very costly and they are very useful, especially if you see in corona time, coronavirus time, people are looking for such type of therapeutic proteins. They are looking for vaccines. So if you see these type of biotherapeutic proteins are very important. So uh, how the cost can be reduced or how the cost can be not reduced so it can be affordable to the common man. So what was uh, the reason that industries uh, told us that low enzyme activity leads to the acidification of the medium and due to the accumulation of lead, uh, accumulation of lactate, the cell, uh, the complete production is reduced. So we try to see uh, this reduction, uh, try to see uh, the accumulated lactate uh, reduction through that. So we try to use uh, various type of platform. So in this study, uh, we try to use the Wacker secretion platform Pefnex system. So I'm coming up uh, further. And we discuss various platform which uh, uh, can give you enhanced production of these therapeutic proteins. So if you see, this is a customary production process everybody is using, including us. So we are using upstream, downstream, we get a desired microorganism or a clone, but then we do the fermentation, then we uh, do the purification, then we get the, get the final product. And this is a customary production process. But if you see, we have uh, developed or devised uh, during our study, a advanced process that is a cost-effective production. So you have to innovate every step. If you see uh, the conventional technology, the complex process with low yield and high cost, but if you use this advanced technology, which we have already documented, I will show you in the coming slides, you are definitely going to get very good results. Like in clone development, what we use is that we use glycoengineering tools. We, can, we have used uh, fusion tags. We have used novel promoters. Then in fermentation, uh, normal fermenters or bioreactor is fine, but you have to use the microbioreactor. And then also the medium and feed optimization, which is very important. For purification, you have to use Wecker, signal fusion tax, and also iFold kit uh, DSP optimization. So this is very important. And we documented all the story in a form of review. Uh, that is advanced technologies for improved 
uh, expression of recombinant proteins in bacteria. So you can read this particular aspect and get uh, knowledge about that. So uh, these were the common issues which was uh, told by the industry and then we sorted it out. One was lactate and one was ammonia. So what was happening is that uh, lactate and ammonia both uh, uh, reducing the cell viability, reducing the productivity. Ammonia was also affecting the product quality. So what we did is that we did the metabolic engineering and then we tried to have high cell density, high viability, high titer, process feasibility, uh, good uh, product quality and uh, production economy, which is very, very important for the industry. So we did this uh, in the CHO cells and you can see this is the amino acid analysis of the spent initial studies. And then we tried to see how the uh, metabolic pathway can be monitored. So our approach and strategy was to develop an engineered cell line for industrial production of low cost affordable recombinant protein. So what we did, just a summary of this, is that we cloned a pyruvate re carboxylase gene in E. coli. Uh, then we created engineered CHO cells expressing this enzyme. Then uh, we did co-expression of therapeutic monoclonal antibodies. And then we tried to assess the product quality by uh, and the quality expressed by the engineered cells. So one by one, I will just briefly explain. I cannot explain everything here because it is a very long story, but I will try to summarize so that you can have a look about that. So this is a cloning of microbial pyruvate first uh, step. We use these vectors and we use these cloning vectors, PCH11, 12, and 13. And if you see, we did the co-clonon optimization for the first time. And uh, then we have uh, got the following cis acting uh, sequence motifs were avoided. So if you see, this was the first strategy. We uh, cloned a PC gene into the following expression vectors. And then we uh, tried to express this uh, PC gene expression. And this was the PCR protocol, complete PCR protocol, by which we have used. And finally, we prepared glycerol bank and for long-term storage. In the same way, in second strategy, we use a similar line. The only thing was that we have used a different uh, uh, vector as well as we tried to have a two strategy in case one strategy fails, then we can have this. So what uh, we concluded from that, that the PC gene was cloned in all the three expression vectors successfully. The vectors were characterized by restriction di digestion. The plasmid DNA was prepared in large amount for linear transfection. And now you see, we then the second step was creation of engineered CHO strain. So we uh, tried to see the pool level study. So this was the uh, complete uh, desired gene. And this was the expression vector we tried to see uh, through this. So if you see, this is a long process. It takes a lot of time. So what we did is that we did the clone evaluation and expression of the selected clone and then the fermentation. So this was the PC transfection strategy, which you can uh, find it here. We used a cell line, CHO cell line from in vitrogen, then vector, then method we have used neon electroporation, then uh, transfection condition is given. And then again, we have used uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategy, two strategies. So we did uh, this PC gene was closed in the following PSO, uh, PCHO12 and PCHO13. Then uh, this was the result of uh, this uh, transfection. You can find uh, very good transfection experiments were there. So what we uh, got that we need to get the stable pool. So stable pool cannot be generated in one uh, study or second. So what we did that in first step, we transfected the pools. Then in step two, we get cell pool one. If you see the green dotted, uh, the green dots uh, represent uh, these uh, high producing cells. You can see the non-producer, low producer, medium producer, and high producer. So here, the green, we need more greens. So we try to see, we first with low selection pressure, we got less green, but we got medium producers. With high selection pr uh, pressure in cell pool two, we got uh, more uh, uh, high producing cells. Then we did a shake flask studies with that. And then you see, uh, we did the core transfection, which is uh, described in this uh, thing. So the selection phase one was for 20 to 25 days. And later on, we repeated it. Every experiment we have repeated to get uh, the stable pool generation. So what we concluded from this, that no significant PC expression in the cell pool uh, at higher concentration of selection pressure was observed. The vector and host uh, combination didn't work well for PC expression. So to evaluate the protein expression, we adapted the second strategy of PCHO11 vector, and then we tried to see that. 
So then this second strategy was used and same protocol we have used, the same cell line we have used here and the transfection media was also same. But we have used uh, that uh, strategy of transfection that selection phase one and selection phase two where we have to select uh, the stable pools. So if you see, this is the ELISA uh, profile and we had this control and you can see that 1B, 1C, 1D, 2D, the best pool, you can see that the best pool uh, is selected from this particular study. And then if you see, we did the mini pool studies. So mini pool 1B, 1C, 1D uh, and parental cell uh, were uh, grown and you can see uh, different profile of different uh, pool studies. So then we did the facts study to know the viability of the cells. So the facts study, uh, if you see uh, from day zero, if you can see day zero, day three, day seven, day 12, and day seven, uh, 17. So these studies uh, were uh, very important that on day 17, you can get uh, most of the colonies which are uh, giving very good production. And we, we, we use selected uh, this particular pool 2D. So pool 2D was selected and uh, we got the highest cell density up to 26 uh, into 10 to power 6 cells per ml as compared to parental cells and then cell viability was also 30 percent more even on day 14 then culture longevity was also in, uh, uh, over 80 percent on day 14 control of the lactate if you can see we got three times less lactate uh, 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 than the previous one then finally pool 2d was selected and you can see these are the verified studies. First, we did the screening of 500 clones. Then we top 10 clones we have to select. So this is uh, not an easy process. We have to do a lot of clone, uh, clone uh, um, analysis. And then you have to select top 10 clones for further uh, fermentation experiment. So if you see, this is a bigger picture for clone 12. This is day 0. This is day 1. This is day 2. Then this is day 5. Then you see day 8. Then day 12, you can see a lot of colonies on day 12, then day 13. So uh, we did uh, studies uh, for this particular thing and which represent that clone two, uh, 12 is very, very important for further study. So we selected clone 12 for further studies and then we have uh, uh, studies like clone purity, metabolic profile, cell culture profile, protein RNA expression, gene copy number and stability. So this study we have conducted uh, and we got very good results. So I'm not going in detail in all the studies, but we got a stability up to 60 generation, which was a very important study. And if you see, we uh, summary uh, this, that clone 12 was less glucose and glutamine consumption rate, high lactate consumption and less ammonia. This was the problem in the initial uh, stage in the industry. And we, we got a clone which can give you the very good profile with uh, good lactate consumption means less lactate concentration and uh, ammonia accumulation is also very less. So then we did the PC expression with this particular clone and you can see the results of DNA uh, PCR amplification gene copy number study uh, of top 10 clone was done. So you can find that PC PYC clone tw uh, this 12 was very important in this aspect. Then we did the process visibility because industry also looks for the uh, process visibility. So we did the cell line engineering media fifth optimization. So we selected the right clone. Then we did the uh, complete uh, study of this uh, particular clone. And then finally, we tried to see that whether uh, clone 12 is good or not. So we got a very good result that we got uh, PC clone showed uh, better performance as compared to the parental cell uh, with peak cell density, cell viability, lactate consumption profile. Then we did the uh, complete uh, process feasibility studies and then we did the co-expression of the PC gene. So for co-expression, we did the co-transfection of PC gene in MAP uh, producing CHO cells. And then we did the MAP production uh, totally. And then if you, ca you can see that this is a complete uh, uh, profile uh, showing the PYC overexpression. So we overexpress this and try to see that we are able to see uh, the galacto galactosylation was to more than 2.5 fold and reduced manosylation by 2 fold. So these are MAP char variant study. We did it uh, using uh, this uh, uh, HPLC and no, uh, no major change we find in this uh, charge variant profile. Then we uh, see the charge variant profile through HPLC, but we got here increased acidic and main peak. 
and reduced basic pain. So finally, the research outcome indicated that uh, metabolic engineering of uh, PC gene into CHO cell line is a very good improvement. And it is important because of these reasons, which I already explained to you. And uh, also, you can see the PC gene load, three to four copies. Uh, this is reported from the first time from this. And we have used first time codon optimized PC uh, gene for cell injury. These are a few studies which were published and our study which is presented here. You can find that uh, many studies they use CHO, K1, DG, and uh, we use CHO S cell line. Then engineering of codon East PC gene into CHO S, there is no report of codon optimization till, uh, till 2018 when we published this paper, 17. Now maybe there are studies. Uh, study of PC gene copy number on lactic acid metabolism, there is no uh, report available uh, till that time. Uh, highest peak cell density we obtained, that was 26. Earlier report was 14 ml. Then uh, we got four folds uh, compared to this. Uh, and then cell viability 94% on uh, day 14. Uh, earlier it was 75% only on day 12. Then tighter improvement, then uh, no significant impact on MAP charge variant. And there is no study uh, till that time for this. So we published in PLOS1 as the metabolic engineering of CHO cell line for cells for development of robust protein production process. This is open access paper, so you can uh, read this paper. This we published in August 1st, uh, uh, 2017. And now you see uh, these are few excellent reviews of whatever work we have done. These are research reviews. Uh, microbial platform technology for recombinant antibody production, uh, fragment production. This is very important these days. And you can see a lot of platform technologies which are reported are after this work. We have published this in 2016. And you can see a lot of fragment uh, are produced. Then gene editing for cell engineering trends and application. This is also very good review. You can read it that how gene editing tools, which is very getting very important these days. So you can use uh, these tools for cell engineering. Then this is also a very good review on sophisticated cloning, fermentation, purification for enhanced therapeutic protein production. Very good uh, study, uh, very good review, and you can uh, go through it. This is available online, free of cost. And uh, this is also a research paper where we have an overexpression study, which you show in the previous slide, uh, which we published overexpression of uh, codon optimized yeast systolic pyruvate PYC gene. And then other areas are there, so I, I just want to brief. Uh, uh, I am also working on other areas of biofuel research. We are working on algal biotechnology as well. So we have published few papers like uh, using the algal flocculation. If somebody is interested in algal biotechnology, they can use uh, these algae for uh, flocculation. And if you increase the flocculation, and you can get uh, more biomass in algae and uh, biomass and biopolymer. You can use a natural plant-based biomass, which we published uh, recently in Bioresource, that this particular uh, algal biomass can be harvested because most of the time algal harvesting is a big problem. And the most of the biofuel production from LD is uh, on harvesting techniques. This is a biofuel technologies book where we have contributed. Uh, this is a complete book uh, with my collaborator, Brett. Uh, is advances in enzyme technology. You can see a lot of good uh, research, uh, uh, research aspects and new avenues in this book. So I refer this book. If somebody is interested, they can uh, get it through their library. Uh, other areas where I am working is plant microbe interaction. And this is a new uh, addition to that we published last year. Uh, in 2018, we, are, we have just started working on this, that how to use gene editing and systems biology tools for engineering the plant growth promoting microorganisms because these are going to a very important tools for bioremediation, especially how these microbes can be used. So these are our collaborators, Professor Yutaka, Professor Suren Singh, Professor Plow, uh, Professor Carlson uh, uh, Norder, uh, Professor Jagjit Yadav, here I spent time uh, during Indo-US professor, Professor Brett Plasky from Rhodes University. And these are future lines of research uh, we, we have started, that is engineering the PGPMOs for uh, bioinoculant capability enhancement, biocomputational tools in probiotics and prebiotics, metabolic model systems biology for microbial interaction. This is a recent paper just published uh, uh, for bioinoculant capability enhancement. 
how uh, systems biology and metabolomics tools can be used. This is our lab group website, which you can refer and you can see uh, the recent updates here and uh, as well as various areas where we are working. These are present uh, PhD students working in lab. Professor Marcio knows them. Uh, most of them, uh, they are working right now in the final year of PhD. So you can see Twinkle work on bioinoculant, uh, Monica work on probiotics, Dinesh works on algal uh, biopigments, Sunita works on computational vaccine design using enzymes as well. Issue works on prebiotics and metabolic engineering. Babita works on bi uh, microbial bioremediation. She published recently a very good paper. I will forward to Marcio, a research paper in the Journal of Hazardous Material. So I will forward the copy to Marcio. Uh, Mandeep works on enzyme technology. Mandeep uh, was associated with uh, Marcio uh, during uh, most of the work. And uh, then we have some trainees. So these trainees are uh, from different disciplines. They are not uh, biologists. Some of them are uh, mechanical engineers, some of them are process engineers, some of them are uh, uh, AI uh, people. So these are few students, they are trainees, and uh, uh, they are trainees and they train us also, they tra get trained to the life science thing. These are few my, uh, MSc students. This is my past PhD students, uh, Sanjeev works on process development. Most of the work which you have seen uh, in uh, this uh, metabolic engineering is done by Sanjeev then Dr. Jahangir, then Rameshwar, uh, Chiranjeev, Sripal, uh, Dr. Puneet uh, Singh, and uh, Vishal, he's now in South Korea, uh, Dr. Smriti, she's working in Delhi, uh, Ruby, Mahak, and Vishal Anand. This is my uh, lab group photo. Presently, we have these members in our group. And I acknowledge our university for providing infrastructure and support. Department of Science Technology, because without grant, you can't do anything. So DST, Fast Track Grant, then Department of Earth Sciences, Government of India, UGC, New Delhi, Indo-US Science Technology, and American Society of Microbiology, University of Cincinnati, Durban University of Technology, and IPCA Laboratories, Mumbai, India. So thank you very much for your patient hearing. I'm, uh, I will be happy to answer a few of the questions if you have. Thank you very much, Professor Shukla, for your vibrant presentation. It shows a glimpse of how dynamic you are and your group are, your group is. I had the opportunity, I had the privilege to work with you in your lab for six months, and it was one of the most vibrant uh, scientific atmospheres I have ever witnessed. Uh, it's also very important uh, for me to public uh, thanks Dr. Shukla and all the MDU family for giving me the support I needed while I was stranded in lockdown in India. I will be forever grateful to you. So uh, thank you once more. Now. Uh, we will uh, discuss, we have some questions. We have 60 people with us this okay. afternoon. So this is great. I really want to thank you. Okay, I guess I'm the one who will start uh, with the questions. I would like you, it would be important for us here if you could uh, address your experience in translating the science you produce to the industry in India, since India is one of the uh, biotech hubs we have in the world. How is your experience with dealing with translational research? Uh, thank you, Marcio, and uh, thank you all of you to invite me and uh, sharing my thoughts and my work, whatever we are doing. Uh, we have just started learning it, and I, I cannot say that uh, a complete translation is there, but uh, my one experience with the translational research which we did in this uh, metabolic engineering was very good because we got a very good support from uh, the industry. But in case of enzymes, uh, we are not that much uh, lucky to have that particular support. But uh, being a teacher, like uh, Marcio also knows it, uh, most of you are teachers, 
so we don't get enough time to uh, put our efforts consolidated effort for uh, you have seen that most of the time we are busy in administration and also we are not able to transform it because the time we get the product our student leave uh, for the phd and once they leave uh, it is difficult to carry out further work so most of the time we focus on the publication so my personal experience is that good some of the good work uh, we can also try to collaborate with industry and try to focus on that so my experience is good if we try to put more efforts on this type of translational thing that will create uh, create more attention to the public especially in terms of uh, these research which we are doing especially uh, these days we are doing lot of like we have done lot of actinomycetes isolation in the lab now if we want to process it further we apply for various grant and if if we are fortunate to receive the grant and we get enough time to translate it it will change everything thank you very much i have another question which was uh, casted by professor edivaldo from enzymology he had to leave because he had another message another meeting but he casted me his question by whatsapp considering the xylanases approach how feasible do you believe is it uh, to apply the computational modeling if you don't have the crystallized protein, if you don't have the uh, three-dimensional uh, structure yet? Uh, if we don't have three-dimensional structure, I don't think that you can apply uh, these tools because mm -hmm. you need to have uh, those uh, structures in place. So mm -hmm. either you can ask uh, if somebody has uh, done the 3D structural uh, analysis or you can use uh, various tools to get those 3D structures because that is very, very important. I see, but would it be possible uh, to do some modeling in comparison to previously described structures? Yes, yes. For previously described structure, there is options and there are uh, different type of databases of these proteins. So they can supply, like in NCBI database, also 3D structure you can find, lot of 3D structure. So you can use those things. That is not a, a big deal. Okay, Professor Shukla, thank you so much. We Do have we have more, more questions? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, it's from Jessica, how can computer analysis be used to identify multiple COVID epitopes or proteins as target for antibodies design? Um, pardon, please. I, I didn't understand. How can computer analysis be used to identify multiple multiple COVID zeptopes as target for antibodies design. Good prop. Uh... Yes, they, they want to know how the computer analysis can uh, indicate how epitopes can, can could be the target for the antibodies for to design okay. Epito new Epito antibodies design. or neutralize. Yeah, yeah. epitope design. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Specifically so, uh, for, for COVID. Yeah, okay. Uh, that, there is a, There are a lot of tools. If you see, epitope design is very, uh, uh, not a difficult task with the in silico experiment. Like people, they are working on antibodies which uh, they have designed the epitopes. So we have recently started this work. And if you see, we have to select the best epitope which uh, man uh, manages uh, well with those type of antibodies. So uh, recently we have published one study. If you uh, want, I can share a copy with your audience. That is, a, I have not presented that study here. That is how the epitope engineering can be done. So you have to see those tools and it is uh, not easy in the dry lab. But if you see the wet lab, it is very difficult because the same type of results are not coming in the wet lab. So you can do everything in silico, but when it comes to the product development, you have to do the wet lab study. So it is fine, good uh, structures, good data, good presentation, but you cannot transform everything which is in silico to the wet lab. And it is very difficult. People are facing about it. Okay. And the other one, can you tell us more about the work on plant growth promoters? 
Yes, uh, as I told you, uh, this is a new line of research which we have started. I'm not expert in plant growth promoters, but I work on the bio We have just started one student I have taken and one project we have taken is that plant growth promoters, especially if you see PGP or most. So we have started working on plant growth promoting microorganisms. So the microorganisms which can be used for bio they can be used as like we use the consortia. So you have to use the consortia and they are available. The consortia are to be designed by you based on the characteristics. Like if you want uh, your soil uh, uh, in agriculture field, if you, it, it needs more nitrogen or it needs more uh, you know, phosphorus or it needs some of other aspects. So you can design your uh, particular bioinoculant based on its capability. So it is available in the uh, info, uh, literature is available that which bioinoculant is used for what type of soil. So you can use that. Okay, thank you, Marcio. More, mm -hmm. more questions? No, we don't oh, have. Uh, we have the Philip oh. Lins. Would you okay. like to know how actually works the algae flocculation process? Oh, yes, it is, it is a very important uh, thing. And uh, the flocculation of algae, and uh, uh, these tools are uh, not a first time uh, told or designed, but the modeling and this particular aspect of uh, flocculation is important because you try to get the particular type of lipids. So if you are able to flocculate it properly, you have to identify the correct lipid. So the process of flocculation has so many aspects like sedimentation is there, then crystallization of those lipids are there, then also the purification of the lipid. So the sedimentation process is well defined and then you have to see that what type of flocculation you are using. Either you are using a natural polymer or you are using a, a chemical polymer. Based on that, you have to select best uh, algae, uh, algae, uh, algae uh, colony and then you do the flocculation. It is a protocol designed based on the algae selected. So you cannot design the same protocol for all the algae but a standard method will be said. So that is also available. So I can I can give you that information. Okay. We have one final question from Kunal from Jarkan, my yeah, student. Kunal, Kunal, yes. Yeah. He would like to know uh, in which uh, systems the engineering approach you have employed for xylanase can be translated to other hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, uh, Kunal, uh, for Kunal, it is that we used uh, thermomyces lenses, fungal system, mm -hmm. and we try to use these uh, engineering of the xylanes in this system. And uh, I have not tried other microbes, so I cannot say that it can be applicable or not, but the fungal system is okay. It can mm -hmm. tolerate this type of thing. Bacterial system, I am not sure about it because bacterial xylanes, I never worked. And okay. uh, uh, yeah, so I have expertise in fungal system. And I think if you want to engineer those uh, things, uh, those xylanases or something in other fungal systems, we can do that. But we can have a try. Okay. I have one final question for, uh, from Professor Cintia Coelho from Genetics Department as well. Uh, he, she wants to know about uh, the functional prediction for fusion proteins. Functional prediction for fusion proteins. Fusion proteins, yeah. I, I think I have not tried this fusion proteins, but we have tried this uh, monoclonal antibodies. So mm -hmm. uh, we have tried with monoclonal antibodies. Fusion proteins, I don't think that I have worked with that. But uh, yeah. uh, the approach of uh, chemical, uh, the approach of cell line injury uh, is used. I have seen some of the studies where, where they have used the fusion proteins, but I don't have much expertise on that. I see. She is concerned about the independent determination of one structure and the other. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Do we have any more questions? No, I think that it's so. Okay. I thank you once more, Professor Shukla for being such a great scientist, such a great colleague, 
and a great friend as well. Congratulations on your talk. I'm sure that it was very uh, beneficial to all of us who had the privilege to attend. Yeah. So thank you once more. I hope we can count on you in another opportunity. Please be safe. Yeah, yeah. Jai Hind, Bahot Danyawad, Firmilenge. Yeah, I just want to convey that uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Marcio, uh, Professor Anamelia, and Jivago for inviting me for this uh, PG uh, webinar. I'm very happy. Uh, and uh, I, I wanted that uh, uh, this was not a virtual, I might have visited your place because uh, I am really uh, looking forward to come to Brazil since long. So it will be great pleasure in the future when this corona will go. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. All of you, please stay safe. And uh, thank you for invitation. Namaste. Namaste. Th thank you. Ah, namaste. E para os alunos que estavam aqui, na próxima semana a gente tem um outro webinar com o Dr. Pedro Vieira, que é da Unicamp. Então, espero vocês na próxima semana, é, neste mesmo bate-canal, só que às 16 horas, tá bom? Até lá. Sim, ah, não esqueçam é... de deixar o like no, no, no canal, tá certo? E quem não se inscreveu ainda, se inscreva. Yeah, I will learn. I will learn Portuguese also. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have given a book to me. I will learn. Yeah, it's easier than Hindi. I can assure you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so bye. much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Então... Boa tarde. Yeah. Nos vemos no próximo webinar. Tá bom. Tchau para vocês. Muito bem. De vago à distância.